This is the Mocha Football The Mocha This is the Mocha Football What's going on, everyone? This is your humble host, Kevin Grant, and I'm with the man of any hour, Damon Anderson. And we have a good show for you guys today. We'll get into Northwest Blair matchup from last week, along with that tight paint branch Gators matchup that ended up going all the way to the wire. Let me first start by saying this, Dane. I think it's been a very good and competitive first few weeks of the season, and it has me wanting for more. I really can't wait to see how things are going to end up. It almost feels like we're in the middle of a really good movie, and you can only see things developing. You have the what's going on with the 4A North, uh, where if Sherwood, Payne Bench, or even Springbrook for that matter, ends up anything less than 9 1, they can miss the playoffs. The emergence of Richard Montgomery and what that means for the 4A West. What are some of the things that got you excited for the first three weeks, Damon? Two things, um, and they both are in the same vein. The first one is if you would have asked me preseason at any point during the season, would Richard Montgomery be in the lead in the 4A West region? I probably would have laughed at you. Right. But yeah. that's exactly what we're looking at right now after week three. Richard Montgomery is the number one seed in the 4A West region. Not Quince Orchard, not Northwest, not Clarksburg, Richard Montgomery. And I think that's awesome. I think that is absolutely awesome. Second of all, if you would have told me after week three would Springbrook be undefeated, I wouldn't have laughed at you, but I probably wouldn't have given you a definitive answer. Right. But yet, here we are, the Springbrook Blue Devils, um, who, for those of you that don't know, were the kings of Montgomery County during the 80s. Yes, they were. Um, coached by current good council coach Bob Malloy, are, looks to be like they're back. Um, coach Lomax has recreated the magic he had going as the offensive coordinator in Rockville, and he, he took it down county to Springbrook. And it, it's working. Um, now, with that being said, they got their big, biggest test of the season coming up. But mm-hmm. so far, so good. Absolutely. So, yeah, those are the two most exciting. Oh, and there's one more thing. Um, I'm happy to see Seneca Valley back um, yep. where they rightfully belong among the county elite teams. I agree. Um, they had a few down years uh, by Seneca Valley standards, which basically means 7 and 3, 8 and 2. Right. But, uh, it's good to see uh, Damascus having some true competition in 3A for the first time in a long time. I, I honestly can't wait till week nine when they match up. Okay, let's first get into the last week's game of the week where Northwest headed down to Silver Spring to take on Blair. I was there at that game. I was really excited to see what Blair could bring. And at the start, they really didn't show me much of anything. Got down 27-0 and in the first quarter, and everyone's looking around like, uh-oh, this might be another one of those Northwest claims along with the likes of what we saw last year. But Blair really showed me a lot, man. Uh, came back, made it a one-position game at one point, but ended up falling short 58-23. This is not your mom and pop's Blair teams. They have a lot to be excited about over there despite the loss. Northwest showed flashes of their old selves, but at the same time showed their youth. What are some of the things that you took away from the game, Damon? Um, What I took away is um, basically what I spoke about last week. The Northwest defense is where they need to be. They just need to get the offense clicking. Mark Pierce has been playing excellent ball all year. It was just a matter of uh, the new pieces at Northwest um, getting in sync with him. And it looks like they solved that puzzle um, clearly. Um, These 58 is the type of score I expected Northwest to be putting up coming into the season um maybe that was just me being a little bit optimistic but um yeah they they fixed what they needed to fix and moving forward i expect to see more scores like this in the 35 and up range northwest uh now with that being said they almost let blair back into the game right right but uh it looks it looks like after halftime Hey, they got things taken care of. And and this is in the nick of time because for Northwest, they're hitting the, the toughest part of their schedule. Three solid teams. Uh, they're going to be at Sherwood next week. Mm-hmm. Um, they get upstart Richard Montgomery at home, mm-hmm. and then they go to QO in week seven. Right. That's a crazy three-game stretch. It's not going to be easy. Um, I expect 
him to make short work of Whitman this week, but after that, it, it, it's it's going to get crazy. Now right. for Blair, I don't want to say it's back to the drawing board, but they got a good taste of the next step they need to make to be considered an I elite agree. team in Montgomery County. I agree. Um, they're not done um, by any stretch of the imagination, but when they take on Paint Branch, when they take on Sherwood, when they take on Damascus, they can't get off to a slow start like they did against Northwest and, right. and try to dig their way out of a hole. For the most part, I think the offense played okay. There was a couple of mistakes, but um, they just dug themselves in a, in a hole too early. I think they kind of got away from what they wanted to do in that game, and they were just literally playing catch-up, which um, kind of shows your hand when the other team knows you have to put up a lot of points in a short amount of time. There's only a certain number of things you can do to get that done, and uh, Northwest exploited that. Right. But with that being said, there were some bright spots, um, specifically Clifford Carter, once again. Mm. Um, Double-digit receptions, about 150 yards receiving. Right. Um, he's, definitely, he's definitely in the running for all-county wide receiver. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, for the most part, Blair has has, has to shore up the defense. Because, right. Right. as I mentioned, when they take on Greenbrook, Sherwood, and Damascus, uh, those are three teams that can put up a lot of points very quickly. Right. They cannot can they cannot get off to a slow start against those teams. Right. Now, oh, I never forgot about Pink Branch in two weeks too. That's another high powered team. Right. Um, right. Yeah, it's not going to get any easier for Blair from here on out. Um, honestly, I expect them to go to Kennedy and take care of them. I expect them to beat Einstein, but outside of that, right, it's not going to be. I don't think Churchill is going to be an easy game for them. Right. And the aforementioned uh, six teams aren't going to be easy. So, but it's still a possibility for them to make the playoffs. The problem from there for them is now they're competing with Richard Montgomery uh, for that for that four spot. We expect Quince Orchard to be there. We expect Northwest to be there. That leaves two open spots. It's between Blair, Clarksburg, Gainesburg. And Richard Montgomery, right. like Blair is not alone. Right. So it, it's it's going to be tough, but oh, it's I think they can pull it out. Yeah, I think they can pull it out. Let's move over to another game from last week, where both teams came out with positives, in my opinion. I think this was the first game where that great linebacker course from Paint Brands had to show out, and did they ever, man? They were hitting everything: Jordan Hill, Gibbs, Time, Mikey Collins. They were bringing on every snap. Amari Sebelos. So had a good day, even though the yarders was lower than usual for him. But that's to be expected against a really good Gatesburg defense. Before the season, I said that Jonathan Lyles was the Bob Sanders of Mocha football. And there was a few people that questioned me about putting him so high in the DB rankings. But there's something special about that kid. And he's motivating his whole team, man. Uh, Paint Branch ended up outlasting Gatesburg at the end, 21-13. But don't you feel as though Gatesburg might be a team that that not only could make the playoffs, but do some damage when they get there? Absolutely. Um, If you go back and listen to our our, our preseason preview, um, we mentioned we weren't sure what Gatesburg had, but we were positive they had something. Some talent, right. Because, exactly, because it's Gatesburg. There's talent everywhere um, in that area. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, I wouldn't be surprised if they make the playoffs, and if they do, they can definitely make some noise. Um, speaking specifically about this game, I don't know what it is about Gatesburg and Pink Branch, but for the past three years, this <laughs> yeah. has been a one-score one game. Right. Um, even, even, in, even last year when Gatesburg didn't have a great season, um, they had some injuries that hindered them a bit. Even at the end of the season, they managed to upset Paint Branch. Yeah. And then going back two years ago, it was a high-scoring game that was won by Paint Branch by less than a touchdown. Matter of fact, it might have been a, a, a three-point game. Right. So I don't know what it is. Coach Kephart has, you know, some some informants <laughs> in Paint Branch. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, what the case, the Gatesburg always plays Pate Branch tough, no right. matter 
who, who, who the players are or what the records are, but it's always, always a close game. And this year's um, version of that, that what seems to be a budding rivalry, um, lived up to it. Like you said, um, Paint Branch hung on for the win, 21-13. Um, Armani Sabalas came back down to earth, quote, unquote. Right. Um, from those Madden like numbers he was putting up in the first two weeks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but he's just, he still had a solid game. He's still the front runner for Moco Football All County QB. Right. But um. But they they it they showed some some chinks in their armor. Um, yeah. They they aren't exactly the unstoppable offense that they were looking like in the first two weeks. Right, right. Uh, Gaithersburg's defense basically held them in check. I think going into the game, if you said, we're going to hold Tank Branch to 21 points, anybody in the county would take that. Absolutely. Um, Markel Simpson had an excellent game rushing. Even though the, the yardage wasn't there, um, he, he, he kept the ball moving when they needed to get it for Gaithersburg. Right. And of course... Um, Carlin Basin, son of Mark Basin, mm-hmm. had, had a good game. Um, that one interception uh, may have cost him a shot at the win, but overall it was an excellent game right. by the senior quarterback. Right. Um, but yeah, it, the result wasn't a surprise, but how it happened was. Right. Um, I didn't expect the game to be that close, but that just... Uh, Shows you how how underrated Gatesburg is. Yeah. Now moving forward, I don't I don't think anybody's going to underrate them again. Uh, the surprise factor is gone. Right, right. Move, moving forward, Gatesburg is a serious contender. They get a break next week. I fully expect them to handle manhandle Walter Johnson. Right. But the following week is a huge, huge game at Quince Orchard. Right, right. Um, that that's a playoff implication type of game right. or right. If, if nothing more than playoff seeding but it might be for a playoff spot um, looking back on it for Paint Branch this week against Kennedy I expect that to be a running clock but uh, next week or two weeks from now week five they yeah. go to Blair and I expect that to be a shootout right. uh, I right. wouldn't be surprised if both teams put up 40 points in that game right. uh, that's going to be going to be ridiculous right. um, but at the end of the day Paint Branch came out on top um, they're still undefeated which is all that really matters um, right. moving forward yep. but like I mentioned they definitely showed a few chinks in their armor uh, people are going to look at that film and see if they can replicate what the Gatesburg defense did to slow them down Okay, we're finally putting weeks during the past. We're getting on to this week. The mega game is Clarksburg heading over to a place that you know really well in the Cougar Dome to face QO. I've really liked what I've seen from QO since the Damascus game. They've taken care of business the way everybody thought they should. And I think this and I think it's a young team rounding into form. Of course QO is gonna run the ball. But what I think the coaching staff is finding out is that if they can get the ball on the edges with Barlow and Beander and those kind of guys, there's almost no team that can stop that. Clarksburg has looked good outside the Sherwood game. I think the biggest question with Clarksburg is do they have enough of a passing game to beat an elite team? I know you're pumped for this one, Damon. What are some of the keys to Friday night's matchup? Yeah, this is a matchup I love and hate. Mainly because it's literally two of my favorite teams in Montgomery County. Right, right. Um, damn, I hate to see either one of them lose, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> um, for Clarksburg... Uh, this this is similar to what they were facing when they matched up with uh, Sherwood right. um, a couple of weeks ago. Right. You got the only difference is instead of a uh, a D one caliber wide receiver, now you have to deal with the D one caliber running back. Yep. Um. Yeah, it, 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 it's going to be a problem. Um, this will be the first test for Quince Orchard since that uh, week one Damascus uh, beat down. So the Cougars are, I'm sure, 
eager to prove that even though they had that loss, they're still one of the top teams in the county. Right. Um, yeah, so, and, and this game's at home. So with Quince Orchard being at home, um, they definitely want to put on a good showing. With all that being said, um, Clarksburg definitely runs the type of offense that can give Orchard some problems. Right, um, if you right. go back and go back and look at the, the Damascus film, yeah, uh, the Quince Orchard line and linebackers had problems with that multi pronged rushing attack that Damascus ran. Right. Now Quince Orchard run. I mean, I'm sorry, Clarksburg runs a a different type of offense, right, right. but it, it, the wealth, it though. still remains. Exactly. Right. Um, they have a three-headed monster in the backfield with uh, Foreman, Perry, and Gordon. Right. All of them share the ball almost equally. Um, and they'll mix in a pass, up to some passes here and there. But if Clarksburg is going to be Quince Orchard, they're going to have to have a strong, strong showing in the rushing game. Yeah. Not to mention, they're going to have to deal with the ever-improving Quince Orchard offense. Um, Doc Bonner has slowly but surely started to look more comfortable in his role as the Quince Orchard quarterback. He had a solid game last week versus Wooten, went yeah. 14 for 20 with two touchdowns. And those 14 com- completions were to multiple receivers. Right. Um, I do believe seven different receivers got into the mix so it's not like uh, Clarksburg tried to do with Sherwood and just uh, key in on one guy and try to take him out right. you're going to have to deal you're going to have to deal with Barlow you're going to have to deal with Beender you're going to have to deal with Kim um, Doc Bonner has multiple targets he can get the ball to and he can get the ball very quickly he throws a very nice ball and that's not even mentioning uh, Binder and Barlow coming out of the backfield. Uh, so, Nick Moon, uh, Fofi Bazzi. Right. Um, they're going to have Clarksburg, that is. They're going to have their hands full. But it seems like every other year, Clarksburg plays Quince Orchard very tough. Right, right. So we'll see how it plays out. But regardless, I have Quince Orchard wing this game. I'm going to go. Quince Orchard, 28, Clarksburg, 14. Let's get into some of the other games this week. Number one, Damascus is heading over to Poolsville. Both of these places are close-knit towns that love high school football. So just from that standpoint, I really like this matchup. Poolsville is on a two-game winning streak. Poolsville is on a two-game winning streak, and they have a kid named Jonathan Hetrick, who's a big-time playmaker for them. But I'm not sure if they have enough. Plus, I think that Damascus wants to make a real statement. I think everyone saw what Seneca did to Poolsville week one, beating them 41-13. And this is the first common opponent, I believe, between the two. I think in the back of Damascus' mind, they want to dominate Poolsville worse than Seneca did. Now, that can work against them as well, because Poolsville is no pushover team. What do you think about this one? Yeah, um, it's going to be tough for Poolsville. Extremely tough. Right. As bad as, as bad as that Seneca Valley game was, I think this might be worse. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really coming at a a tough time for Poolsville. They're they're coming off a, a two game winning streak. Things are looking good up in Poolsville. Yeah. <laughs> um, as of now, they're in in the hunt for a playoff spot. Um, right. There's a log jam for the third and fourth spots. But it yes, I there's no way I see them pulling off this win right. um Asus is just it's, it's too much for them um like you mentioned Damascus I mean I'm sorry Poolsville definitely has some solid players um and pretty much any other team in 3A not wearing uh, green and gold yeah they would have yeah. a shot absolutely <laughs> <laughs> you're right but unfortunately this week um they, they're playing one of them. The good news is they, they got their toughest games out of the way. Um, this is definitely, I'm going on record, this is going to be a loss and it, it, it's going to be a brutal one. Um, yeah, the, the funk show just keeps on rolling. 
rolling. Um, I expected this to be running clock before halftime. Um, hopefully, Poolsville can uh, do something in the second half to make it re respectable. But the way I'm looking at it, I got Damascus winning 48 to 6. Next, we have Rockville taking on number two Seneca. It's been real rough for Rockville the last few weeks. First game blown out by Damascus and then losing to the rivals by 28 in RM. So I'm sure they're looking to put out a better performance this week. We all know what Seneca can do. And PD Gaston's Damon has looked really good. We weren't sure how that transition was going to go with him taking over, but so far so good. What does Rockville have to do to be in this game late? Um, they need to bring back. Oh, man. Here we go. To, to make it close. They need to bring back Caruso Gangbe right. and uh, and my boy at quarterback, Chuck okay. Reese. Oh, man. They, get, <laughs> they bring those two back. It might. Similar to Poolsville, um, Rockville's running into a, a, a juggernaut that's just rolling downhill um, this week. Um, yeah. Seneca Valley's riding high right now. After that Northwest win, um, they put it on Churchill last week. Right. They put it on them. Yeah. 50 to nothing. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Church, Churchill is not a bad team. No, But not. they made him look like it. Yeah. Um, with that being said, it it might be, it, this game might be worse. Um, Seneca Valley is just clicking on all cylinders. That, that's all I could really say about them. We, we've talked about, uh, Felice Platt, um, we've talked about Golston, um, Gaskin's looking more comfortable at, at, at quarterback, he, he, he went over 200 yards last week in passing, so when you have that balanced offensive attack, it, it, it's it's hard to stop, mm -hmm. and more, more importantly, Seneca's defense is playing lights out, um, outside of giving up uh, 13 to Poolsville in week one, They've looked awesome. Right. Absolutely right. awesome. Um, yeah, Rockville. Oof, I'm sorry, guys. I love you. You know I do. I love Rockville. Love Rockville. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, this, this is not, this is just not the week. Right. Um, I got, I got Seneca winning 54 to nothing. Number three, Northwest is home again against Whitman. I know that Northwest has not been pleased with how they played, but they have a lot of positives working for them. Reggie Anderson, as good as advertised, this kid can boogie. I'm trying to tell you right now, this kid can shake anybody out of their shoes. Alfonso Foray keeps doing with his thing. Uh, Cleo Owens and his running mate, Jawan Ferrari. Those two make this offense a balanced attack. And damn, they have a kid named DeAndre Jules, starting on the D-line, 6'3", 240. Freshman, just remember that name for the upcoming years. Women has a kid named Matt Clayton. He plays both QB and defensive back. He's a real impressive kid. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking for in this game on both sides? I'm looking to see if Northwest Northwest offense can continue what they pulled off last week versus right. Blair. Um, they seem to be clicking on all cylinders during that game. Um, did outside of that second quarter, the, the defense did what they were supposed to do. Um, I just want to see if they can continue their momentum. Right. Um, and I I expect them to do um, to do exactly that. Um, Whitman, similar to Poolsville, similar to Rockville, it, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Um, Whitman's coming off of their first victory of the season over Einstein right. in a shootout, no less. Yeah, yeah. but um, it, it, it's going to be rough. Um, as you mentioned, Whitman has what, to my eyes, a solid, solid quarterback in Matt Clayton. Right. Um, you look at his film. He's a very athletic kid with a good arm, good feet. Um, unfortunately, uh, he's kind of on an island over there in Potomac. Um, right. I expect him to have, you know, a couple of good drives, a couple of good plays, but. At the end of the day, there's just there's just too much um, for the Whitman defense to handle. Um, I'm going with Northwest. Ooh, I'm gonna say 42 to 14. 
Number four, Payne Burns is back at home versus Kennedy. I think a name that everybody really needs to start getting familiar with is Jason Hockaday. He's a running back for Paint Branch. We hear all about the big numbers that Paint Branch puts up, but this kid has made the task of stopping Paint Branch nearly impossible. How do you see this game going? Yeah, this is this 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 is the week of the blowout, so we might as well just call it that. Um, <sighs> yeah. gonna lie to you i'm a little bit just a little bit nervous about this one man uh we have number five share with the alma mater going to springbrook who was three and no putting up points on everybody marcus sims travis levy bob Jonjo have literally been unstoppable this season all three have scored at least one touchdown in every single game so far but springbrook launch cadet hitting all of his targets from the quarterback position sean kizzo that man's been great running back for a while these guys are a real threat to anybody I think that this might be a high scoring game, but I just don't think that I don't think that Springbrook has enough to stop Sherwood's offense. Do you think that Springbrook could pull off the upset this week? Um I'll just come out and say it. I'm picking Sherwood to win this game. Right. But I I think it may be closer than people a lot of people think or or are expecting. Right. Um Springbrook, along with Richard Montgomery, right. is one of the uh, nice surprises of the 2015 season. Right. Um, and you mentioned uh, Sean Seizu. Um, he's thriving in Coastal Max offense. Currently, he's the number three rock rusher in Montgomery County. Right. Brian Zuckerman from Churchill and Tom Parker Those are the only three backs with for, for, uh, Hundred yards through uh, three weeks, right. but don't be fooled in thinking that that's all Springbrook is about. Um, Colin Tonka from Springbrook is in the top and receiving yard in Montgomery County, right. and Lawrence Connect is also in the top ten uh, for quarterbacks. Um, just oh. doing a quick glance, that's I think that's the only team with. A player in each of the major categories. It's in the very balanced. Thing. Very balanced. Very balanced. So that that alone will pose some problems for sure. With right. The question is, will it be enough? I don't think so. And we're only talking about the Springbrook offense. Um, yeah, yeah. That's my so, question too. Yeah. The defense. Yeah. Exactly. That that's where the game's going to break open. Springbrook, uh, they're going to get on the board. Um, they'll probably get on the board a few times. Springbrook gave up 22 to Blake. Yeah. They gave up 16 to Marquwood. Um, that kind of gives you a, a rough idea of what their defense is looking like. On right. the flip side, Sherwood has been playing lights out pretty much for the most of the season, except 
except for last week, which gives yeah. me pause. Yeah. yeah. Um, you held Clarksburg to 13 points, but you gave up 29 to Magruder. Yeah. That, that's, I'm not exactly sure what was going on there. It's a rivalry um, game, man. A, you know. It's a rivalry. It, it's a neighborhood rivalry. I understand that. Yeah. But 29 to Magruder. I know. I know. I know. That's yeah. Slightly, slightly unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know Magruder improved. Right. That improved. Right. Um, with, with all that being said, um, I expect Levy and Sims to put on another show. Um, I expect Springbrook to also put on a show. Right. But um, at the end of the day, the victor is going to be Sherwood. I have them winning 42 to 21. Hey, everybody. That's all we have for this week, man. Um, you know, get out to the games if you can. Support the kids. Usual stuff. I see the, the crowds at QO and... QO, Northwest, Seneca Valley, Damascus, uh, Sherwood, teams like that, Paint Branch. We like those student sections. We like seeing the fan support. Um, go, get out to those games, man. Get out to those games. Support the kids. Honestly, these are experiences that, that as a high school kid, you'll never be able to duplicate ever again, right? So I say get out there, support, be with your uh, fellow athletes, and, and have a great time, man. Um, Damon, do you have anything you want to say? Um, nothing much as usual. If you have any questions, hit me up on the message board at mococofootball.com. Hit me up on Twitter at Nomad Anderson. Um, if you're going to be at the Clarksburg Quince Orchard game, I'll be roaming around. So if you want to see me, yell at me, whatever, hit me. Just uh, come on and up. And you're only going to have a certain <laughs> amount of time because he's at QO. This is the king of QO. Um, this is the man <laughs> of QO. So, I mean, you're only going to have about, I don't know, uh, give or take, you know, between 30 seconds to a minute to really talk to this man because he's an important person, right? So, <laughs> if you're planning on talking to Damon on Friday, write out what you're going to say, cut it down, be brief, and keep it moving. That's all I got to say. One game of note that we didn't mention, um, but it bears mentioning. We have a uh, rare inter-county private school matchup. Avalon is traveling to Bullis. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two of the top players in the state um, digs for Avalon. Haskins or Bullis will go toe-to-toe. So if for whatever reason um, you can't make it to the games we mentioned earlier, Avalon at Bullis is... It's a good consolation prize. Right. Again, everybody, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.